Well, the paper is about the development of a very broadly useful technique. We introduce a method which makes use of a technology known as droplet microfluidics. It's about developing a process for looking at individual cells and measuring their gene expression. But simultaneously on thousands of cells. <laughs> um, so I can try. I'm not very good at concise, but I'll try. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Um, any cell population that we will look at will have some variability between cells. No two cells are identical. If you just take a hunk of tissue and grind it up and analyze the RNA in there, you have no idea whether that represents uh, what every cell in that population is doing what, um, or what, uh, what may, may, may represent what no cell in that population is doing. How cells differ will teach us a lot about the nature of the cell population we are looking at. Imagine if you had a population of men and women and you just uh, assume that everybody in that population was the average between men and women, you wouldn't have uh, represent a single person in that population. So one challenge is, can we measure a gene expression prof profile of each cell individually and not do it on one cell at a time, but do it on thousands of cells so that we can start to develop a picture of how, uh, how the population of cells is embedded in gene expression space. So what's so difficult about single cell profiling is, first of all, just a simple issue of isolating single cells and carrying out complex chemical analysis on those single cells. So we were thinking about these, these problems of how we're going to process large numbers of cells, how we're going to do so uniformly, and uh, we became familiar with Dave White's technology for droplet microfluidics. Droplet microfluidics, the best way I can explain it is to imagine uh, doing many, many experiments in the wells of a microtiter plate. I replace the well of a microtiter plate by a small drop, but each drop represents one experiment, represents what happens in one well of a microtiter plate. The drops are not limited, and we can do millions to billions of experiments simultaneously. So the way this works is, is conceptually very simple. You make droplets of water in oil. And these droplets are actually quite stable. So droplet microfluidics allows us to put cells in droplets. But what we really want to do is to be able to use the droplets in order to tag each cell using a DNA barcode. What we do while we assemble this droplet, we have three channels. We have a channel which brings the cell in, a channel which brings the chemical reagents that we need to do the analysis, and then we have another channel which puts in it a bead, and that bead is the key to this whole process. So the approach that we came up with was to use hydrogel beads. A single bead will contain primers that can be used for a reverse transcription reaction, which will then subsequently barcode the contents of the cell inside the droplet. And we don't make one such gel, but we make a uh, library of such gels. We have approximately 150,000 different barcodes, each one of them on a different hydrogel. And now each one of the droplets receives a different gel at random, which ensures that each cell is then barcoded differently from its neighbors. So what we end up with then is a, a collection of DNA sequences, or copies of the RNA sequence, that are now divided by what drop they came from. And then finally we can break the droplets and treat the entire cell population as a single bulk sample, knowing that each one of the cells has been individually barcoded. And now after sequencing, we get a mixture of reads. Each read will contain a different barcode, and we can now group all of the reads from one cell together and do the same thing for each one of the subsequent cells in our sample. One wants to know um, what is the process that's going on you want me to try to get people stopped? I'm sorry. Yeah, you're going to fix the lighting here or the sound? And the challenge is, how do you visualize that data? How do you make sense of it? We can't look in 20,000 gene expression dimensions in order to pick out interesting features. When we began to explore that, we needed new mathematical tools that uh, hadn't been applied to these kind of problems before. I think anybody who's interested in something where the cell behavior is not uniform, which is almost everything, as far as I can tell, um, is going to use this process to understand the diversity among the cells.
So we're really excited by the questions that this technology is now opening up for us. Um, there's really a large number of questions where we're thinking to apply this and where, other, where some people have already approached us to, to, to ask whether we can help them. So it could be for cancer, it could be for tumors, it could be for almost anything that there's likely to be a diversity in the population of cells. So I think a very important part of the work is to actually stimulate mathematicians and computer scientists to actually uh, develop new ideas about how to interrogate this, uh, this data and get new information out of it.